Earth is trying to figure out how their group could be one, right? Um, and they use all kinds of ways, all kinds of means. Um, maybe you have a common pursuit. You pursue the same hobby, right? Um, maybe, that's right, you, um, you, know, you have a similar background, right? So you have a similar life history. Um, you can relate to one another. And so that's something that bonds you together, right? Um, many, many, many different factors for oneness. Let's see what the Lord says in the Gospel of John. John 17, 11. And I am no longer in the world, yet they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given to me, that they may be one, even as we are. All right, so there is the first iteration of, of the prayer for oneness, that they may be one even as we are. Okay, so this is the Lord praying to the Father that they, that the believers, right, first his disciples that he was actually with, but also just anybody else who believes into him, that they would be one. How one? What's the standard of oneness here? Yeah, it's a capital W, even as we are. Okay, how one are Jesus and the Father? Uh, we're talking about the oneness of the triune God. That's so one that when the God the Father sent the Son, God the Father went with the Son. Okay? So it's mysterious, but it's, it's completely inseparable, right? And it's, it's spiritual. But that's the oneness that the Lord prayed his believers would have. Um, and what's, what's, what's the oneness here in? Keep them in your name. Okay. Now, what's the name of the Father? Uh, what, does, what does the Lord say? Holy Father. So the Father's name is Father. Yeah, it wasn't a trick question, okay? <laughs> In the beginning of the Bible, and you know, at the very beginning of the, in, in Genesis, God's name is God. And so the name God, and many people, not just Christians, many people know God in some way, shape, or form. At the level of God being somebody who's omni, you know, omnipresent, omnipotent, somebody out there, God the creator God. So God in relation to the creation is God. But the Old Testament progresses further from merely God. Because then God then reveals his name as Jehovah. What does Jehovah mean? I am. I am that I am, right? And I am, you know, I'm here now, and I will always be, right? That's my relationship with man, okay? So Jehovah is already a further step because it denotes a relationship with man. But by and large, the Old Testament does not talk about God the Father. There's brief mentioning of the Father in Isaiah, but even then, it's with relation to a prophecy of Jesus, okay? So God as a Father is something that is very much New Testament. Now, by definition, a father is what? What qualifies a father to be a father? Sometimes we can get caught up in sort of titles and terms that we don't actually think about. Okay, I mean, you don't just address anything as father. Like, father means like you have that person's life, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It's not just like, oh, protector. Right? Oh, wise one. Okay? But father means there's a life relationship here. Uh, and we can't have that life relationship, right, if we were still in Old Testament times. That's, this is the whole process that, that God had to go through to first become a man, to live on the earth, to then die on the cross, and in resurrection become the life-giving spirit so that he can be breathed into 
his disciples and all those who would believe into him. And so once we receive the Lord, right, once we receive that divine life, then we are regenerated. And what does regenerated mean? To be born again. To be born again with what? To be born again with the divine life. So when we talk about the name of the Father, which is the Father, right? And this is, we're, we're kept in the name of the Father. This really means we're kept in the Father himself. We're kept in the Father's life, which is the divine life. The Father is the source of the divine life. So we can label this whole, this first kind of paragraph, John 17, 6 to 13, as oneness in the Father's name and the Father's life. When we address one another as Brother Matthew, right? Sister Stacy. Again, it, it's so easy to just fall into titles, right? Um, oh, instead of Mr., we call him Brother, right? Um, or maybe we're, we're kind of like a fraternity, right, bro? <laughs> um, and and we, kind of, we kind of forget that actually, by my calling Matthew my brother, brother Matthew, I am honoring that he, like myself, right, is a son of God. So I'm honoring the divine life that's within him, right? And it's a reminder that what we have in common is the divine life. <laughs>